is on the pillow, or the green M&Ms that I asked for. Yeah. Only green. Sure. Where were they? Yeah. I don't yeah. know, you're asking me. I don't yeah, know. where were they? Uh, they, they weren't there. there. They they were they were this is a joke. I do not actually ask for this, although I probably should. <laughs> well, now. Now you know. Now I will. Zach, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, It's been like two years since I've been out here to Alabama. I think I came out for another convention like two years ago. So it was in the same convention center. So it's great to be back. I walked through the doors of the hotel and I was like, wait a second. I have been here, and I, I don't know, two years feels so long. Like, am I the only one that feels that way because of everything that's happened? It was like in 2020, it was early 2020, I think I came out this way. And now, that two years, oh my gosh. It's been a, it's been a long It feels like years. five to me. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of which, I mean, really, you're a vet of the voiceover. Oh, me? No, you're still pretty young, but just. I'm just a child. So what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. <laughs> what was it like? Tell us about those early experiences, those early days being just a teenager in the booth. Yeah, when I was like 16, I worked on a show called All Vanilla Zero, and I also worked on Maki, The Kingdom of Magic. I worked on Kill the Kill. Um, interesting as a 16-year-old to work on that show. Um, and it was a lot of fun, you know? It was great. I think I was very intimidated because I was so new to the world of like voiceover, and uh, a lot of the people I was working with were like late twenties, so I was like, "Hi, everybody!" And they're like, "Oh, you're like our little brother. You're, we're gonna say you're forever twelve." And here I am, having uh, aged very few years since I was sixteen. No, I haven't really aged. Never mind. It happens like that sometimes. Had to be um, one of those things where. You're working on a lot of shows as a teenager, and you're thinking, well, this is going to be a lot of fun to show my family at some point. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, at that point, you know, you're not really doing it as, like, a career. It's more of, like, a hobby, and it's cool to, like, show, hey, like, check this thing out that I did. And then it just started picking up, like, for, like, so crazily. I mean, I went on to do, like, a lot of commercials. I worked with uh, this thing that a lot of people used to use, but probably don't use so much anymore, uh, Pandora Internet radio so i was like almost every single commercial you would hear on there it was insane i used to i did like 300 something commercials for them i did like verizon happy honda guy and then i went on to do like the actual like happy honda guy on like a on like a radio spot in california like hey i'm your socal happy honda dealer you know and it, that was it um so i did a lot of those and yeah things just kind of picked up Roll after roll in video games. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned, you know, those types of gigs, the uh, commercial work and whatnot, because, you know, from your the very beginning of your journey in the voiceover, was it always going to be anime for you? Was that always the goal? Right. So a lot of people ask me, they're like, what made you want to be a voice actor? And my sole reason for becoming a voice actor is because I really liked Naruto. Uh, <laughs> not the most uh, interesting thing ever. Not like, oh yes, my father was in the industry and then I became a voice actor. Or no, I was working at a radio station making a ton of money and then I got thrown into the booth and then I became a voice actor. I'm like, no, I just really like Naruto and uh, I was just a huge fan of anime. And I played a lot of like video games. I love Kingdom Hearts, uh, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, and yeah, I thought it would be cool to do voices for a character. I like how you just kind of casually threw Bryce Pappas Rose backstory. I've heard it a million times. Bryce yeah. and I are at every show together. And he's like, yeah, so my dad played a character in Power Rangers. And, you know, one day they said, oh, we need a, a kid's voice. And my dad said, well, he's the kid throw him in the booth. And that's how I became a voice actor. And he did that voice exactly the way he does it, too. So I yeah. know you heard it one <laughs> I have heard this story many a time. As well, I know we have a ton of crowd questions here. I don't know if we'll be able to get to all of them, but uh, Zach's going to be at his table all weekend. So if we miss anybody, I will be here. Make yeah. sure you go check him out there. Who's first? Who is our first question? Oh, in the back over here, back middle here. That's Kyler, by the way. Hi, Kyler. Don't ask me how I know that. Good <laughs> <laughs> <a new> question. <laughs> all right, what you got? So speaking from the Wizard of Heroes, I want to know how you feel about Kenta Bowen. Who's your favorite member of World War? Who's my favorite member? Oh, I haven't really played the games. Didn't I? Didn't I meet?
meet you too earlier? Or no? I didn't meet you at my table? It was somebody else in here who likes Trails of Cold Steel. I don't know a whole lot about the game, but uh, Campanella was cool because he was one of my first like villain sort of characters in a way. And he got to do this sort of voice. And he was very like evil and not evil at the same time. But it was fun. Yeah. All right, Brent, tell us your name. My name is Mariah. So from one Kingdom Hearts fan to another, how are you taking the confusing story? <laughs> I made complete sense of it. It is great. <laughs> I love you. I'm recording this. It is awesome. It was the best story I have ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's about as far as we go. Um, okay, this is Alice here. Alice, what's your question? Uh, you wish you could have said more than hook and quickly. You know that those are his best lines. That somebody tweeted me on on the Twitter and said, "Oh yeah, I think he has like one line in the new Archon Quest." And I was like, "What do you mean? He doesn't have one line in the new Archon Quest. I think he says some." <laughs> And so he probably has three lines in the archive. Yes, those gasps are considered lines. I have to consider them that at this point. Help me. <laughs> okay, friends, what's your name? Um, so Tondra has like these dramatic quotes that she yeah. quick crying for like the last episode. How do you get into that? <laughs> <laughs> it is Extremely difficult, I will tell you. Um, I, and the reason why it's so hard is because, like, we don't have time to prepare for the episodes we're going to do. Sometimes I don't even know what episode we're doing, and we go out of order, and it's kind of like janky the way that they do it. Um, and, you know, I get in the booth, and I get my script, like, ten seconds before we're about to do the first, like, live in, the, in whatever episode or scene we're doing. And it's like, okay, so yeah, like everybody's dead, he's crying, uh, you know, okay, all right, good luck. You're like, and that's basically what I get as like an actor, you know, it's like, have fun. And I'm like, okay, cool. So it, it is difficult. I think I just try to like think of the saddest thing I possibly can and uh, just try to like pull from it in those scenes. Or like the angry scenes, I try to get really angry, you know, like the one time I got Taco Bell and they don't put hot sauce in the bag. <laughs> you know, try to pull from that. But yeah, no, it is, it is tricky, for sure. Okay, and what's your next? Lily, what's your question? So, I was always going to be a demon slayer, except for Tanjiro. Who would you want to be a demon slayer? Ooh, um, it would probably be either be like Zenitsu or Inosuke. Inosuke is actually my favorite character, so if anybody didn't want to hear it, because no, Inosuke is my favorite. I I don't know how Bryce does the whole like grit in the voice, because that would probably destroy me. You know, I would be so I'd be so dead by the end of that. But somehow Bryce figured out a technique. If you ask him, funny enough, he talks about how when he first started recording uh, Inosuke, he said that yeah, I like lost my voice completely. So I had to figure out a different way to do the same voice, a, a better technique. And then he figured out a better technique, and now he's able to do it all day. You'll hear him at the convention. <laughs> Just go up to his table. Every five people, you'll hear that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or he'll scream, fight me, at you. <laughs> it's a whole experience. All right, what's your name? Oh, I have a few questions, all right? Is that up to me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, first off, uh, how did you get such big roles? And second off, as a nod to Koichi from JoJo, are you really a reliable guy? Am I really a reliable guy? And how did I get the roles? Um, let's see. I mean, really, like, you know, I. All of the roles I get, I just audition for them. They, they go through a studio, uh, depending on like what studio it is. Um, some studios in Burbank, uh, because I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, some studios record like video games, like Fire Emblem. Another studio does Demon Slayer. Um, 
another one does, funny enough, like Campanella and Trails of Cold Steel too. So I just auditioned for them and somehow they just are not sick of me yet. Uh, and am I a reliable guy? I am the most reliable guy in terms of, yes, I'm just the most reliable guy. I'm an editor. Good with the editor. Okay, what's your name? Hunter. Hey. Hey. I've been watching all uh, seasons of Demon Slayer and stuff. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, how would you feel if they ever try to make a live action Demon Slayer? How would I feel? Mm -hmm. What live actions have been good? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm serious. Like, what? I cannot think of one. One has been good. There has, there has been like some good ones. I think it'd be interesting to see. I think interesting is the best. What I'll leave it at. Yeah. <laughs> well, they never made a live action Dragon Ball. It's never happened. <laughs> they actually have. <laughs> All right, but oh, I have something to add on to that really quick. Did you know? I didn't even know this, but I found out last week that. They made a video game of the live action Dragon Ball. Oh yeah. <laughs> there is I know that a one. PlayStation game for Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> so funny. Okay, so no worries, guys. Yeah. What's your name, Chris? Uh, my name's Kobe. Um, is it hard to stay in character when you're doing the voice of Tanjiro? Yeah, I I think it depends on like the scenes and stuff we're doing. Um, sometimes it is because as an actor you want to focus like solely on the emotion. And a lot of my roles, I, I kind of do like a different voice. Um, I, I don't know how that came to be, but you know, a lot of my characters like they either have this kind of you know thing going, like their voice is a little bit higher pitched, or their voice is like a little bit lower. And like <laughs> it depends on what it is. But you know, I just want to focus on the emotion really. So yeah. It, it is hard to say, but that's why we have the director who kind of helps guide me back and say, hey, like, you know, this is a little too gritty for Tanjiro, and maybe, like, you know, we'll tone it down a bit, and it'll make your voice a little bit lighter for the scene. Okay, what's your name? Um, it's Sam. I, I wouldn't be very sure. Yeah, oh, thanks for coming by. Good to see you. Oh, glad to be here. So, if you have all the characters you play, it doesn't matter green screen or whatever, That's a good question. You know, I come out to these conventions and I wanna I wanna make sure everybody has like a good, you know, experience and whatnot. I think becoming an actor has really brought out a lot of my personality. I'm actually like just a very like, quiet, kind of introverted person, you know. So I mean normally I would say maybe I mostly like Ethan or even Violet. Like I have my moments, but other than that, like I'm just super chill, you know. I will go back to my room and sleep and cut myself <laughs> off from the world. Okay. What's your name, buddy? Jackson. All right, Jackson, what are you thinking? Uh, what has been your favorite anime character that you voice acted? Ooh, my favorite anime character? Hmm, it's hard to say. I think um, it's hard not to choose. Tanjiro, because I've been on this journey with him, you know, like he's done so much already. We did season one, we did the movie, we did the video game, and then we did season two. So I think I just kind of relate to him the most, even though I am an only child. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have siblings. They're like a younger. He had, a, he had like a, he, he had a pretty big family, right? He had like a big family. Okay, so What was my my favorite and like easiest scene? Yes. Um, my favorite and easiest scene. Maybe it's when Genos was fighting against the uh, mosquito girl, and he was like, "Incinerate!" And then all of a sudden, he just loses. Nah. He doesn't lose a lot of fights. I don't know. He, he wins them all. Don't let the show 